Hi there friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots and today we're making flower pot hat gnomes. Boop, they're cute, boop, and if you'd like to make them, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here, it helps me out so much. These are made with Dollar Tree items and some Mongolian fur. We're gonna make sock gnomes. Be sure to join the Facebook group. We do everything from crickets and SVGs, boop, to boop, gnomes. All right, so we're going to start here with some Dollar Tree flower pots, paint, kids socks, wood beads for noses or wood rounds, and Mongolian fur. See this little red Solo cup? Got it from the Dollar Tree, it doesn't work for this. All right, so I'm going to start by using two colors of paint mixed with white, so they're just made a little bit more pastel. I did spray paint my terracotta pots just because I was going to use pastels. If you're using a thicker or darker, more saturated paint, you might be able to skip that step. For the very top, I'm using the paint out of the bottle just to add a little depth to my paint. I'm gonna repeat that for this small two and change inch flower pot, and then I'm gonna give a second coat to everything. Next up, we're gonna start making our gnomes, which are just gonna be simple sock gnomes made with white children's ankle socks I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use wood rounds that are fit inside of our flower pots, and we're doing that because we wanna make sure the bodies fit inside our flower pots, otherwise it would just look wonky. So I'm using two different sizes of wood rounds, sticking them in the bottom of the pot to provide some stability before I add the weight. Speaking of weight, I'm just gonna use what I normally use, which is poly beads, which are plastic beads. Great for making gnomes, stuffed animals, whatever you got. So I'm just adding a bit in there and then I need to hide the beads because these are Dollar Tree socks and let's just say their quality is a little bit, hey, I can see through it. So I'm just adding the polyfill all the way around, squishing it, making sure it's really solid and rolling it in between my hands before I test fit my hat. I do this a lot during the video and you'll see why. We have to make sure certain things will fit. I'm using a one inch wood round for the nose, but I also have to um, allocate for the beard. So you're gonna see me struggle with this because everything embroidery thread related that day was horrible. It just takes 15 minutes to tie a knot, apparently some days. <laughs> So I'm just gonna tie a knot at the top of it, test fit my hat again, decide that I don't like where it's sitting because I want to make sure this is secure. So in order to get a little bit more height, I split the top of the sock and made a knot. And that way the flower pot rests just a little higher. Speaking of higher, just kidding. Let me know if you want this format. So what I'm doing here is a little bit different. I'm trying to be real time with everything and then just speed up the secondary. Let me know if you like this format below. I can't please everybody, but I am listening to your comments. All right, so I'm just gonna repeat this for the second gnome. Now for the little guy, I did have to cut off some of the extra sock there so it didn't show through the bottom of the flower pot. That's a little flower pot. Maybe it's a two and a quarter inches. Uh, it's small. They come three in a pack for the Dollar Tree. All right, so let's give a shout out to Mongolian fur because look at the transition between just brushing it out. Uh, both are great looks. If you need a video on how to cut faux fur, I have that for you. For this guy, what I'm going to do is identify the width and identify a V. So one thing I messed up was I cut it just a little bit too wide. I'm gonna show you how to fix that if you do that as well. But I wanted a wraparound beard. Because we have to cover a good bit of the front of the gnome, I chose a V uh, shape. Now, I get a lot of questions on cutting faux fur. Don't use a box cutter, use a razor or some other very small blade. Look at the amount of transfer. Once you learn how to cut this stuff, you won't have a lot of shedding, I promise. Watch that video if you're new to cutting fur. So you'll see here, this is a wraparound beard. It covers all of the sock, which I don't like the look of. All right, we're going to put the nose on by splitting the fur all the way until you can see that fabric backing. Add a generous portion of hot glue and then press your wood bead or round in. You want the glue to sort of go up along the sides to make everything really secure. 
You can see here I'm cutting off the fur in the very back and that's because when I test fit the hat I didn't like that the fur was going to or, or the pot was going to adhere to the fur. That does not produce a very good seal. So we want to make sure these are solid, right? And so what you're going to do is you're going to position the nose under that lip of the hat. So unlike normal where we would just set it on top, there's not enough here for us to grip. So we want to push it up under. Gives it a nice little look too. You'll see I mess up a little here and don't go far enough down with my glue. I'll show you how to fix that. We do want to put a good portion of glue there on the top of that sock as well because that's going to be able to adhere to the front of our pot. And look at that, I realized, ooh, I didn't put enough glue. And my first glue gun ran out of glue, so hey, everybody warms up a second glue gun, right? I'm putting uh, glue a little bit lower, and then I'm gonna press that gnome into the back of that pot, or the inside of that pot, before I put my hand up the back to press in the very top of the gnome into the pot. Once the front is secure, you're going to put a generous portion of hot glue in the back right there and we're going to press that into the pot. Oh, make sure your fur is out of the way so you don't get any glue on it, and then press. Now, because I'm paranoid, I think, I always tug on everything here, making sure that pot is very securely fashioned. Fastened, fashioned. <laughs> I need coffee. All right, we're just gonna repeat this for the second gnome. Listen to this amazing music. <laughs> For the second gnome, you can just cut a rectangle of fur, not a V, because you don't have a lot to cover up. All right, that time I learned, right? We're on to the flowers now. To make these easy flowers, I love these flowers, by the way. I learned them when my daughter was very little. You're just gonna create six circles. I used three inch circles I'm cutting here with shears, and then I used the same diameter of the smaller pot, the two and a quarter or whatever, and cut those with pinking shears. Now, neither matter. You can use regular scissors, you can pink shears, you can use wave shears, whatever you want. Then you're going to fold them in half, each of the circles, and you're going to iron them. I'm using my Cricut mini press because it's now my new favorite thing in the craft room. I love it, I use it a lot. Once those have all cooled down, you're just going to press them again in half. Easy peasy, them squeezy. You have a knotted piece of thread over there on a needle and you're going to use, go in from the back at the top where you cut that circle out. And you're gonna use a running stitch and just go boop, 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 in and out. I'll save, I'll save the sound effects. Just make sure that you go in from the back on the first one and in from the front on the very last one. And when you do that, you just add all six petals, repeating the process for each. Now at this point, you can shape your petals or wait until the end. I prefer to wait until the end. So once you have your last petal on, you're just going to grab the end that you had knotted and you're going to tie the two ends together. So it forms a circle in the middle. There you go. Make sure to tie it pretty tight. I use a couple of knots there before we cut it off. And again, you can shape it after you've tied it and cut it. So I just press into the center, move the petals in and out, and you can see there's a little flower. For the backing, I just used felt, and for the front of the flower, you have a million options. You can use rhinestones, you can use earrings, you can use brooches, you can use buttons, anything you want. But I just used two very dark pieces of gray felt. I felt I had enough color in the hats. <laughs> As you can imagine, next up, we're going to glue these just off center, either to the right or the left of our nose. And then I bought this amazing, for the price, lamb's ear uh, bag of sprigs, and I just added two for each gnome. There they are, easy. And you can see this is the front, this is the back. What do you think of these? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know about the format. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun.